2022 is going to be the year of interoperability. So we're looking at, you know, Polygon, Quant, and a few other things that might give us those opportunities. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's video, obviously, in a little bit different place, we're actually down here in the southeast, slammed with snow. So down here in the south, a lot of people just don't know how to drive with even a few inches on the road. So not in my normal studio, but I uh, wanted to bring you some information on really to in today's video, going over quant network, interoperability, and going over really why this is important. So some of this is going to be technical, but I wanted to break down some information because if you're going to be holding assets, it's important to understand how all of the pieces fit together, how all the different players interact and because now that's just going to allow you to understand really what you hold the the internet the internet of value and uh, you know really crypto in general is really going to revolutionize things so without further ado let's just jump into it and if you like these videos and these updates on quant network hit the like button because um, like i said we're going to take time to go into some things so without further ado Really, where I wanted to start with this, interoperability is going to be a major key. So we're going to share some clips from Rao Pal. We're going to share some clips from uh, others in this video. We're going to share some information that really shows interoperability as a whole and as an idea is something that in the future, there's not just going to be one network there's going to be a network of networks obviously that we know quant is building that out and so when i see and i go into things like interoperability here on crypto slate and i just see some of the other coins you see really you, there's other websites that do this while it may be polka dot and chain link cosmos these are great projects i'm not not even saying anything bad about them i feel like they'll survive long term there'll be a really there'll be much more than I feel like a lot of people think in this space, especially just even within the next few years, uh, we, I feel like there'll still be a, a good amount of players in the field. So, you know, really the blockchain revolution, now this is from an article from Real Vision. It's, it's a little old, it's a little old, but it was actually a interview that Gilbert Verdian had with the blockchain. You know, we obviously we know Gilbert Verdian is the CEO of Quant, and he's just kind of going, I'll summarize when he sat down with Real Vision. He was really summarizing what the blockchain solution is. And I thought it was interesting because he touched on several things that I've not really ever even seen in other places. And I feel like if you're a quant holder or, you know, if, you've, if you're if you newer to this channel or if you're newer to quant, rather, you might not know some of this stuff. But essentially, it, the financial system is the main area of crypto that I like to focus in because it's the, the, the field that my business is based in. But I like to see and really dig deep into things uh, concerning that and you see here our current financial system was designed in the 50s and 60s it has largely worked in the time since it was developed and evolved from paper to electronic then digital obviously now it's antiquated as it steers down decentralization the article says so essentially Verdian said we've got this huge ecosystem of resources that people can transact and access between each other but you can pay for that within the ecosystem using quant so quant is definitely playing in that centralized central bank cbdc area and they're trying to connect everything together but he and this is a really good point that gilbert said i really the main why i wanted to share this article he said it's a bit dystopian to think that we are going to turn everything that we have ever done off because it is centralized and then go into a complete decentralized model with complete decentralized government governance and it is going to work so basically there's not going to be just a full decentralization. We're marching forward into the era of interoperability. We're marching forward into the era where it'll be a hybrid system of centralization and decentralization. DAOs are great. DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations, that model is great going forward. But also there are downsides to that as well. So I think we're going to have like a hybrid system. And he said, basically, continuing on, he did not mince words regarding the ideals that think we can simply change the entire world with blockchain technology. Many systems, including health, finance, and economic institutions are integral to countries and cannot be turned off. We need to take those existing systems and complement them, Verdian said. So essentially, we need to connect all of that together. And that's what quant is. Quant is not like other solutions. It's really nothing like, it's not just a, a normal blockchain. It's a protocol layer. 
it's a protocol error. So let me actually explain and break this down a little bit more. So like I said, if you're newer to quant, you may have seen if you're uh, you may have seen charts like this if you're not newer to quant, if you've been in a while. But if you are newer to quant, um, shout out to um, Crypto Eugene. Wanted to take some time here and actually share what and shout out to him on Twitter. You can see his handle here. Go give him a follow because he's got always really cool stuff. But we got this really great chart here. I am not a graphic designer, so when I see all the charts that people have made and they're good, I'm totally going to use them. So. This just get this is what they're building though. This is the hybrid model we're talking about because some of these systems are well in the future that quant can connect to even more decentralized systems. So some of these you know may be a little more centralized than others, but that's not really necessarily a bad thing. You know, quant will allow all of these players to interact and connect with each other, whether they're centralized, decentralized, whether it's a, a protocol that is like a legacy system like uh, Oracle or SIA or HSBC would use. Now, we know all of these, like SIA, you know, we, we know they actually merged with Nexi uh, Group now in Europe. So they combine with several different uh, players there. But they have over basically 550 banks in Europe. HSBC, one of the largest banks in the world, R3 Corda. So all of these systems can interact there's hyperledger all like all of these things are swift they're going dag here department of defense connections ripple electronium i mean digital pound foundation you see lcx is going to be involved in there as well so these these webs this web of connections that they are building quant is sitting in the middle of that so you know we we, we know this if you've been in the space a while but essentially how is that going to happen what actually is quant building so again let me go further into this because it's really important to understand they're not just building they're not just another blockchain they're not just another polka dot they're not just cosmos they're not just chain link even you know chain link approaches interoperability a little differently their oracle solution is fantastic but these are still like blockchain based right they're not they're not integral they're not like built into and building a new protocol layer and that is that is literally what quant is doing quant is partnering with the government mit some of this news like i said is over a year old but they are partnering with them building out a new layer of the internet they're building out a new uh essential foundation of quant you see here what is it what is odap you may have heard of odap it's the open digital asset protocol it's essentially what the, the internet is a series of protocols you see right here i've actually just brought this up on wikipedia everything is built on the border gateway protocol some of this can get really technical not going to get down into the nitty-gritty but all of this the internet protocol suite is basically built on top of the tcp ip protocol right so when you punch in the web address the https all of these different protocols are what make up the internet and that's built on top of the border gateway protocol it's basically a standardized gateway protocol designed to exchange routing and reachability information among autonomous systems so basically to sum up all this nerdy stuff quant is they're helping develop a new layer of this protocol so you have all these things that control like email and file transfer and hypertext transfer protocol does you know transfer all the data odap will be built into the internet protocol layer so you might not care about that if, you know if you're not built and you're not involved in the banking system or the internet day to day but even as an investor you understand quant is literally no other system or network out there is helping develop out a, an actual you know new internet protocol and that's literally what odap is so quant the network that aims to solve the blockchain interoperability issue surprised the community today so this was a little bit older of the interview that was the one we just read but it was just talking about how they're partnering with mit and they're really just again some of this news is a little bit older there but there's still it shows that these different companies you know the government intel cybersecurity from juniper like there we understand or they understand rather what is happening so they want to actually build this out you see quant recently released a ietf the internet engineering task force so they basically you know control what's developed on the internet they in they are developed this proposal in conjunction with 
uh, Quant for the open digital asset protocol, along with MIT and Intel. Quant is trying to create an open blockchain agnostic protocol. So again, they've already made way more progress on that. Now, let's just go a little bit further again because the ODAP sits on top of these different other protocols. You see here, basically, essentially, that's how the internet works. It's important you to understand that the, the internet is basically just a bunch of autonomous systems. You see right here. And shout out again, this is um, Crypto SEC, SEQ, so give him a follow on Twitter as well. Just a great breakdown of this. But again, within each autonomous system, various internet gateway protocols are used to exchange routing information through the internet, through open shortest path first. So these are some different protocols that they're using. And it's just telling you how it works. Basically, Quant is going to be a a connecting oracle on top of all of that. They are going to bridge all of that and allow assets to free freely flow. They won't be one blockchain to rule them all. There will be many different platforms. Interoperability will be crucial. Blockchain platforms can be viewed as an autonomous system, just a blockchain autonomous system, just like different interior gateways that are used in others in the internet today. Blockchains also have their own protocols consisting of various consensus protocols, civil protection, etc. Like the internet, they're all isolated islands which need to interoperate together to achieve the true potential. This is where the proposed ODAP protocol comes in. It's a blockchain agnostic protocol that enables interoperability between different blockchain platforms through gateways, similar to how border gateway protocol enables communication through different autonomous systems through gateways or routers there. Basically, that's what we just showed. So it not only connects blockchains together, but also existing non-blockchain networks. That is a network of networks. It's literally rebuilding the entire internet protocol suite. No other crypto is doing that. I cannot stress that. I cannot stress that enough. It's proposing a new standard framework enabling resource addressing for DLTs using the URL syntax. This opens up the possibility of the internet of trust connecting the internet directly to blockchain where traffic can be routed from the internet through gateways to connected DLTs. It's going to basically, in the future, this is exciting because it's going to allow websites to be natively created and served directly from blockchains without all this extra need to have run and maintain web servers, web services, SSL certificate. We don't have to do any of that, right? So it's going to be, it's going to do all that too, a lot more securely. So ODAP is revolutionary revolutionary in all of this you know rebuilding the entire the entire protocol of the internet i mean that's just it's just profound in my mind now um, i got another uh, one little snip here shout out to varg88 on twitter he's got some really interesting breakdowns as well on what actually how this further it, it, what this really means you know and essentially G gilbert had you see here this is a quote from um, that same interview that he had about a year ago with Real Vision. I've always had an idea of creating an internet protocol for money from my earlier discussion. I've been thinking on how to do it and what is the best way to do it. And we have done that in, with the ISO standards and all the other standards that they're doing. Now, ISO, that's old banking type uh, systems and legacy systems to make them be able to interoperate with blockchain. But what Quant is, they're actually, they have their own compliance. They've started the TC 307, which is just a technical, it stands for Technical Committee 307. They are who and what governs new standards being developed. So they're definitely going in about this the very right way, you know, and how, how do you actually do it? And so Gilbert said, he kept going back to the IETF, which is the essentially the Internet Engineering Task Force. I'm actually going to give them a follow. IETF is the Internet Engineering Task Force. They're the ones that endorse and enable TCP IP to happen. So, so again, they, they're what made all this happen, right? So no other crypto, no other interoperability. So no one is doing it like Quant. They're not going in, they're not trying to revolutionize and completely rebuild a new protocol layer, right? So... And with the, having MIT understand where this is all hitting, they've got that foundational core internet technology background to be able to do this. I'm talking about BGP, which is that border gateway protocol the internet's built on, and routing protocols and stuff that powers the internet of today. I approached them, they're like, yep, yeah, we got this, let's do this. So that's what they've done. They've kicked it all off, and 
you know, they've been working on this for the last, uh, you know, multiple years now at this point. So having the IETF involved in that, having all of that, and, and it still be something and that in the future we're going to see uh, a lot more uh, adoption of. Even to the point where, I mean, we've got other... We've got other big companies even exploring it. Like, for instance, I've got a uh, shout out to, to Eric Stolt on Medium. He's got a cool little article written up about Quant. This was from several months ago. Quant Network, the OS for the new financial system, just mainly wanted to show that Visa recently did a white paper. And Visa, you know, obviously everyone knows who Visa is. They did a white paper for CBDC and stablecoin interoperability. And they were essentially looking and discussing how various distributed DLT technologies could interoperate. And inside their white paper, they actually cited and referenced one of the employees of um, Quant Network. So you see Martin Hargreaves is actually connected. He's one of the, the head engineers there at Quant. And they actually had uh, written out a proposal to the IETF. There you see internet and interoperability architecture for blockchain gateways. I skimmed over this and um, I actually have it. You can see right here. It's just essentially a, a protocol. They proposed it back here November 7th, 2021. And the essential, it just kind of go over what the ODAP is. It's an asset transfer protocol operates between two gateway devices so that it's just describe what it is. So having this right again, right here, this was written here by Quant and you have, you have Visa discussing and doing their white paper on universal payment channels, citing the ODAP protocol that quant network is developing so again that just just shows you it, everyone can have their different uh isolated walled garden systems open permission permissionless and quant will be able to connect them all and lastly before we wrap up last thing shout out again to crypto eugene awesome little breakdown here in case you were wondering utility token what do we do how is the how is the token used Listen, there's so many uses for this beyond just a store of value. Everything from enterprise licensing, you have to have the quant tokens, must be provided a quant network in exchange for an annual license. No more tokens are going to be created either. Remember, quant did a 9.5 billion token burn already. So it's not like I had someone ask me, well, can't they just add more token? No, no. That was brought up and addressed several times by quant. You can't just bring, you can't just go and mine more. You can't mine, obviously. No more tokens can be created. So you're going to have to have these in order to run all of these different features and access the overledger network. And trust me, in the future, if you're any kind of business and you want to stay ahead of the competition, you're going to want to get into overledger. So developer licenses, you'll be able to get an annual license to develop applications. On Overledger, we, I mean, platform fees, identity and account. Basically, you have to have this to do anything from transaction processing. Even application users are going to have to hold quant tokens to be able to run multi-chain applications. So it might just be in the future. You just get, you just hold a little bit of quant and it's inside one of your digital wallets. And just like we connect a MetaMask or something, boom, that's going to connect to all these different tools very easily. It won't be like, it won't be even a big deal. Everyone will have this, and it'll just be it'll just be on, almost a sense of currency, you know, for you to be able to like interact, much like we use Ethereum as a sense and a medium of currency in some ways. It, it would be like that, not just an investment of store value, but to be able to do any of this stuff. So, with that, I wanted to kind of wrap this up. I know that was a lot. We kind of sped through a lot, but the open digital asset protocol understanding how all of this works that is you know that's obviously where the internet is going that's where value is going so just understand where and what you hold and just you know keep on paying attention to what's happening you know we're going to keep paying keeping you up to date as well so with that appreciate every one of you coming by and listening to this uh, don't forget please leave a like I appreciate every single one of you hitting the like button on this. It really is totally helping me. I'm really trying to get up to 2,000 subscribers now. So I really appreciate how quick we're coming. I'm going to keep dropping this content for you guys as often as I can, staying up on things. And appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next video.